Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, Balot Chatanero, this is a Sikh of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. <clears throat> and this is from, again, from 1991, this week's Torah portion. From Sikh to Balot <clears throat> Okay, now, now in order to understand this, we have to have a sort of a little preface over here. And that is, if you look in your Chumash, right, you look in your uh, your five books of Moses. So if you look in the in our portion of this week, Balotcha, you can see that there's a couple of sentences right in the middle to talk about when Moses was traveling with the Jewish people in the desert. And it says, <laughs> here, let's see if I will find it. One moment, one moment, oh, here it goes. Look over, it's in chapter 10, sentence 35 and 36, two sentences. Huh? Right in the middle of our this week's Torah portion. Chapter 10, sentence 35 and 36. <clears throat> if you look, it says that you can see that there's a little sort of an inverted letter noon there before and after. And two sentences. What are the two sentences? It says, and it was when the ark traveled. Moses said, raise up God and disperse your enemies. And those who hate you will flee before you. Sentence 35. Sentence 36. When the ark settled, when they came to a place where God said to set up camp, right? when did the ark move? When God said to move the camp. So the ark moved. When the ark when the camp settled down, Yomar, he said, Shuva Hashem, revote al Israel, return God the tens of thousands of thousands of Jews, 600,000. Okay, two sentences, right in the middle, sentence 35 and 36. Well, according to the Talmud, one opinion of the Talmud, this is a separate book in itself. These two sentences are a separate book in the Pentateuch. So it won't be called a Pentateuch, it'll be called a Septateuch, whatever it's called. There are seven books of the Torah. Okay, this is not the accepted opinion, but nevertheless, it is definitely an opinion, and every opinion has weight to it. And not only that, every opinion is true, and on some level, spiritually. <clears throat> in fact, we only say the five books of the Torah. There's only five books of the Torah. But according to this opinion, there are seven. And this opinion is not just uh, up in the air. You know, somebody just said, well, let's say there's seven. <clears throat> there's a definite reason for this. Now, if you have to remember, you have to remember that the purpose of the Torah is to teach us how to live according to what God wants. That's the whole purpose of the Torah. The Torah, the word Torah means teaching, hora'ah. So everything in the Torah, the Torah is a book of teaching. It teaches us something. So the fact that there's seven books of the Torah, according to this opinion, there's seven books of the Torah, right? This third book of the Torah, Numbers, is divided into three, not just one. It's the beginning of this <clears throat> book of the Torah up to this sentence. Then there's uh, these two sentences. Then there's the two sentences. That's a separate book. And then there's the end of the of the of this the Torah, this book of the Torah. So it's divided into three because it's divided into three. So you instead of five books of the Torah, so we have four books of the Torah, and one book is divided into three, which means there's seven altogether. Okay, what's the, what is the meaning of this? What's the repercussions? What do we care? The Rebbe is going to say this is tremendously, tremendously important. 
It's maybe overlooked tremendously, but the, that's the idea of the Mashiach, to put meaning into everything positive, to be able to look positively on everything, to find something good in everything, something good, some redeeming factor, and especially the Torah, which is pure good, to find even deeper good. What good could possibly be here? What can we learn to make the world a better world? That's why we're here, is to make the world a better world. Isa B'Gamor, it says in the Talmud, it says in the Talmud. Let's see where it is in the Talmud. Here. Let's have a look down here in the bottom. Oh, nice. Here, it says in the Talmud. In the Talmud Shabbat. Also in Masechet Sofrin. Also Vayikra Rabba, Midrash, Rashi, and Mishle, etc. There's other places, a lot of places where it says that these two sentences right in the middle of this Torah portion are a separate book. It says in the Gomorrah, this two sentences, Vayihibin, Sararon, and Balotcha here that I just said, Sefer Chashuvu Bifinansman. It is considered to be a book on its own. According to this, Nimsa, so it comes out, Kedirsha Samovuas, like what is learned in the Gomorrah and the Pasak, Chad Savta Amude Shiva. It's a sentence in from from the Song of Songs. Sheyesh no Shiva, it says that its, its foundation are seven pillars. Her foundation is seven pillars. Sheyesh no, that there are Sheva Sifre Torah, that there are actually seven Sefer Torahs. Excuse me. There's actually seven books in the Torah. Seven books. There are seven books in the Torah. Not five as we thought, but seven. Excuse me one moment, just one moment. I want to just look at something. Excuse me. Excuse me, one second. Excuse me one minute. That's what I thought. It is not in Shira Sharon. It is in Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. It's, 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 it's found in the book of Mishle, of Proverbs. She yeshtam that there are seven safer, seven books in the Torah, not five. Cave and since the Parsha Zu, since this Torah portion, by Ibn Sorah, this is a book in itself. So it comes out, Shad Shalomila Nimsa Shalomila Sefer La Atzmo. That before these two sentences are a, one book of the Torah, after these two sentences are another book of the Torah, and it itself is a is a third book of the Torah. So it comes out to be that the third book of the Torah, or the, 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 the fourth book of the Torah by Midbar, is really not one book, it is three books. So you have to have an, add another two to the, to the books of the Torah. There aren't five, there are really seven. Nimsa, so it comes out, Sefer Vayadaber by Midbar is really divided into three books. The Mela, so therefore there are seven books of the Torah. Arbus Forim, six, Vreshit, Shmot, Vayikra, Dvorim. And the Midbar is divided into three. Okay, like I said, this is not the accepted opinion, but it is a valid opinion. And it's not that it just came from imagination. This is, has a very high spiritual source and a very powerful lesson. We'll see. Alpizer, are according to this, the Chiddush, the, the novelty in Parshish Balutcha is that this Torah portion includes in it three books. This se section that we're learning today, this is the section where the three books are divided. Chelik and Parsha, some of it is by Vayibin Saron. Parsha is by that which is before these two sentences, Vayibin Saron. The, sen the two sentences of Vayibin Saron. And the Portion which is after it, everything after which is another book. So now that we can, let's try to understand several things. Good, you want to have an opinion like this? Let's understand all the repercussions of this. First of all, there's a big wonder. If you want to say that there's really seven books of the Torah, so it comes out that the sixth book of the Torah, which is the it's the last part of this 
the book of Numbers, after Vayihi ben Saron, it begins with a bad thing. It begins with the words, Vayihi ha'am mit onanim. Look, look in your Bible and you'll see. Right? Look in your Bible and you'll see. What does it say? Here, look. Vayihi ha'am mit onanim. Where is it? Here. Oh. See? And we look and see here. Let's have a look. One minute, one minute. Let's try to do this here. We've done it before and we'll do it again. Here. Here. See, here we have. Here's the first book. It goes up to here. Va'ana Nashem Aleyem Yom Volayla Vayehi Bin Soa Aaron. These are the two sentences. Vayomer Moshe Kuma Hashem Biyafut So Avecha Yenusa Mim Senech Mivnecha Uben Nochan. When it rests, when the ark rests, it says Shuvo, Shuvo. Hashem, Rivavot Alfei Yisrael. Good. What comes right after that? This is the second book, right? Divide it up. This Torah portion divides into three. What was before these two sentences? And here's what's after the two sentences. How does it bend? This, according to that opinion, this begins the sixth book of the Torah. And the, the book of Deuteronomy is the seventh. How does it begin? Amit Onanim. The people were complaining, evil complaints in the uh, in the ears of God, and God got angry, and there burned in them a fire, and that they, they ate up some of them. There's a plague, whatever. So it ends up that this book of the Torah. Let's make this small again. So it ends up that this book of the Torah. Matchil, it begins with that the people were complaining. Which is a bad thing. And it brought bad results. It says there was a fire burned among the people and there was a plague. And afterwards, it continues on about the sin of Miriam, that the Jewish people, that the, the, the Jewish people, when they were in the desert, so Miriam, it says that she complained about Moses. Okay, we'll learn about that in the court. From this, we learn a lot of she she did it innocently and she no damage came from nevertheless. This is one of the main examples of what's called Lush and horror that we have to watch out for. The Chavetz Chaim brings this, it's brought from the Midrash also. According to this, but another one it says about the sin of the Maraglin, the next week's Torah portion talks about the sin of this Moroccan, the generation that didn't want to go into the land of Israel. They refused to go in, the spies. <clears throat> okay, so what, in other words, if you want to divide this, the Torah into seven and say that these two sentences, this makes a separate book in itself and divides this Torah portion into three, this Torah portion into three, then in other words, it divides the whole entire book of numbers into three, so it ends up that the what comes after these two sentences, which is a book in itself, starts off with a really bad thing. We try not to start off things on a bad note. At the Chirush Bezer Ruin, we can also see Shalakalas for him that all of the other books of the Torah, they have a name that's taken from the beginning. The first letter, the first words of the book, Breshit, Shmot, that begins by Yikra, Right, this is the first word by Midbar. This is the sentence, first sentence, Devorim. Also, the second book uh, by Midbar will be called by Yi Bin Soharon, according to our new division. So, the second book will be called, right, the, fir the, the first book of this by Midbar will be called by Midbar, we'll call, we'll call it Numbers. The second one will be called Nosea Haaron. The second book will be called The Traveling of the Ark. That's a nice thing. Which is not the case. The last, the third book of this, if you want to divide it into three, we lo matzano shekaro. We never find anywhere that this third book is called vayihia am mitonanim. Right? There's sometimes that people do in in Jewish literature that they do <coughs> treat the second these two sentences as a separate book, and they they call it vayihia. 
Vahib bin Sa'aron. But nowhere, even if you do consider that to be divided into three, do they call this third book, the resultant third book, Vahiyam Mitananim, a bad name. This is a terrible name. And we don't find anywhere that this third book is called Vahiyam Mitananim. In Jewish liter literature, we find the first book is called the uh, Numbers, Bamidbar, the desert. The second book, according to what this says, will be called Vahib and Saharon. But we never find that this separate book, this third book, which would be created by making these two sentences into a book. We don't call it, it's not called Vahib Amit Anonim. Not only that, a table we show in the Sefer Zul, Medaberet Odot Enyin Bilti Rasu, the whole thing is talking about something bad. The Aja called Teva, each and every word, in fact, is bad words. Vayehi ha'am mitananim, all these three are bad words. They, con they connotate something negative. The word vayehi, it says that any place there are the words vayehi, it means tsar. Vayehi b'yamei ha'ashverosh vayehi. Vayehi means, and it was in bad days. Ha'am, when it says ha'am, it means the evil people. Ha'am means usually the 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 uh, the, the heir of Rav. Am can mit onanim. Mit onanim. Simple meaning is that they were complaining for no reason. They were saying bad things to, to God. So why divide this the Torah into seven books if it means that because of that one of the books is going to start off with a bad name? Leave it as it was, leave it five, five books. What do you have to make this thing that there's two sentences, that's a whole book. And as a result, the sixth book of the Bible starts off with a terrible name and nobody even uses it, this name. This is the opposite of what the Torah says. It says that a person is supposed to find something good in the Torah and say something good all the time. Why start with something bad? <clears throat> the Torah usually is, is divided into five books. Five, why all of a sudden you have to have seven books? What's the necessity to make it seven? Who told you to do a thing like that? Number three. So here we have two questions so far. If you divide the, the, into seven, so it ends up that the, 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 the sixth book, in other words, the, 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 the last part of this book of numbers it's, it's a separate book on itself it starts off with a bad name that's not a good thing we never do that in the torah start off with a bad number two why who told you to divide it into, into seven books and at all what's the necessity to do that number three cave and since shachaluka the safe of the midbar the three three books shetotza mimenu nechalekas kolos forum if you want to divide this book of numbers into three, and because of that, it comes out number seven. What, where do you divide it up? In the, in the Baalotcha. In Surah Loma, we have to say there must be some sort of a connection between dividing the Torah into seven and this Torah portion of Baalotcha. Now, it's important to notice that these two sentences that we want to say as a separate book, it has nothing to do with anything. They could have stuck these two sentences into, into anywhere in the whole entire book. That that is, was put in here must be that there's some sort of a reason. God doesn't do things arbitrarily. The Pasha is a simple meaning is like this. The Shaykh is between, between the, the connection between them can be understood that the menorah, and I want to give you a little hint of what's going on over here. The Rebbe is going to say that the whole purpose of the Torah is to come down even into the lowest and, and, and worst things in the world. And that's why we're going to have a separate book it's going to start off with something bad to show you that the Torah can come down even into the lowest into the bad. But we'll see how the Rebbe does this. The reason that the division happens in this week's Torah portion, which is called Balotcha, this is attached to the idea of the Torah. The Torah is, Balotcha means lifting up the, the lights. The Torah is called light. Hashem, just like Balotcha Tanerot, just like when it says that you raise up the lights, there are seven lights. Also the Torah, the Torah can be divided into seven. Huh? 
Therefore, this week's Torah portion, Balotcha, is talking about the seven arms of the menorah. And like we learned before, there are seven different types of Jews that make light in the world. And the Torah is a thing of light. So therefore, we're corresponding. We're making seven books of the Torah. Why five? Kenegat Shiva Neros correspond. The seven books of the Torah will be corresponding to the seven candles. Right? So how do you make seven books of the Torah? Very simple. You <clears throat> stick in two sentences in the middle and call that one book and divide. By means of that, you divide one book into three. So you add two more books to the Torah. That's seven. <clears throat> so now that corresponds to the <clears throat> seven stems of the menorah. Seven books of the Torah. Maya, Sheikh if so, what's the connection over here? <clears throat> if so, if so, one second, why did they even say five in the beginning? Why is the accepted opinion five? Why doesn't it always seven? According to the seven branches of the menorah. But we see that that's not that way. God, <clears throat> the, the, the Torah is divided into five, the five books of Moses. So what the, what's the connection between the seven and five? Yuvan said, this will be understood, but it says, with Balot Chataneroth. Like it's known that everything that's in the Torah, Torah is language of <coughs> teaching, is it's a teaching to a Jew in the service of God. The Bafrat, and especially in the things which are connected to the Mishkan. This is talking about lighting the menorah. Where was the menorah? In the temple, in the tabernacle. The tabernacle and the temple, this is the how do you say, ultimate example of serving this mishtafkin, this includes in it all the service of every single Jew. Like it says, make me a mikdash and I will dwell within them inside of each and every one of the Jews. And especially the lighting of the candles, the candles lighting, lighting in the mishkan. This is really the whole purpose of the service of a Jew, serving God, lighting up the world, right? We Jews are not here for ourselves, we're here for the world. Even though the like in everything else in the Torah, there are riboy pirushim. This word balotcha, there are many, many explanations, like everything in the Torah. It says in another place that there's 600,000 explanations for every single sentence in the Torah, that's only according to the simple meaning. And then there's another 600,000 according to the what's called remez and drush and so Hari Lakal Roshe. We're talking about valid explanations. We're not talking about the invalid explanations. That the invalid, there's billions. Hari Lakal Rosh, Laroj, Yeshno, Apirosh, Apashut, Alder Hapashat. But let's first of all take the simple meaning. Ain Mikri, they would say, Lepashuto. Hashayach, which is relevant to every single Jew and to all the Jewish people. <clears throat> what is the simple meaning? This is the simple of, of Rashi. Rashi, the Rebbe Shlomo Yitzchaki, he's the main <clears throat> uh, commentator on the Torah. Even though there are hundreds of them and they're all very nice, beautiful, but Rashi, some or other, <clears throat> he really, um, he's like the, the, the crown of all of them. I just came to explain the simple meaning of the Torah, which can be understood even to a five-year-old child. So from this, we can understand that the Torah, which comes from Hora, teaching, <clears throat> the teaching that there is in lifting up these lamps, lighting up the lamps to each and every Jew, has to be, first of all, to learn the simple meaning. The simple meaning of Rashi on the sentence which is understood to every single Jew. Let's understand the simple meaning. And then we can take a lesson from this to every Jew, men, women, children, in the beginning of a service of God. What does Rashi say? That the lav, that the flame goes up on its own. Why is it called bahalotcha? To raise up the flame. Aliyah, <clears throat> that that you have to light the candles <clears throat> the commandment is, is to leave 
the match or whatever you're lighting the candle with, it should be there so long that it doesn't need the match anymore. And that you keep the match there, don't just touch it and then take the light away. You have to leave the, leave the light there, the match there, until the light goes up and it stays up, right? Till the flame goes up. Okay, is that really so important? Yes, it's very important, and we're going to see why, God willing, tomorrow. Now let's learn the <laughs> yom yom. My father wrote in a letter. <clears throat> Here it says, is when you say shehakol, it says it's a shehakol. The yud in the bracha shehakol, the yud of shehakol nihiye bidvoro. Nihiye, nihiye bidvoro. It should be a comma, shehakol nihiye not a segel. So we should say, Everything was created from his word. That's in the blessing of Shakal. My father wrote in a letter, you should value criticism. If people criticize you, <clears throat> you should be very happy because it will place you on true heights. Agova al MET. It'll give you the truth. And people usually people criticize you, you get all angry. Who are you to tell me what to do? He says, no, you should value criticism. Thank you very much. I'll take that to heart. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, three o'clock, God willing, we'll learn Chomesh, Palotcha. Beautiful explanations today on the Chomesh. What, what? If one lights the Shabbat candles, yes. This is talking about the, the candles in the Holy Temple. Holy Temple had to be there. You light the Shabbat candles, you can light however you want. You can touch it. and then... Not, No, you don't have to. <clears throat> At least as far as I know. It does, you don't have to leave the, can, the, the, the match there until you're sure that the light goes up on its own. But for sure, before you make the blessing, you have to be sure that the candles are lit well. That they're lit, that they're lit they're well, that you, they, they don't go out. Because if they go out and you make the blessing, it's a very big question if you can put them, light them back again, right? The, uh, I mean, the fact is you can't light them again. If you made the blessing, you accepted Shabbat, you're not supposed to. Uh, that's why even most people, after they make the blessing, they don't even extinguish the match. You just put the match down somewhere where it will burn out on its own. But um, yes, you have to make sure that the lights are lit before you make the blessing. But in as far as I understand, in the temple, what it meant is that you shouldn't just touch the uh, the match to the wick, but you should leave it there, the match or the thing you're lighting with, you should leave it there until you're sure that the candle goes up on its own. Have a good day with Mashiach now.